Okay, so I'd like to go uh, further east to the next city, whatever it's called. I'm pretty confident that my brake fluid's gonna last. I checked it last night and it was towing the line. Why is this truck gotta be parked right here? I guess he's not too much in the way. She. Yeah, I don't know the name. I, all I know is it's one, exit 164. Heading towards Pendleton. This would be the route you take towards Pendleton. This railroad track is pretty busy, so um, paying attention can be pretty important. Just going from one small town to the next, one library to the next, one food bank to the next because there's a food bank that's open at 1 a.m. I look forward to stopping there. So that's the motivation. It's like a new hunting ground. There's new wild game. It's like a 30 mile drive. Boardman? I think Boardman. What the heck is all that? Concrete? It's like they, oh man, was there an accident? Looks like a tire might have shredded. Hmm, I'm going 40. That's way too slow. Yeah, Boardman in 26. Hermiston in 50. Pendleton 72. So, along the Columbia River, this is not driving along the ocean. This is driving along the Columbia River. And I question, why don't hippies walk up and down the Columbia River? Well, for one, just look at the landscape. It's awful. It's definitely more tempting to walk up and down the the Pacific Ocean coast because of all the trees. You know, 200, 300 foot trees that have a lot of space in between them. It just, it's really beautiful. You, you try to walk up and down the Columbia River and it's a desert. It's awful. Better off uh, taking a, a boat down the river and fishing, maybe, but you never escape the sun. Lewis and Clark reported that there was a lot of blindness, and I think they meant uh, on the Columbia River, there's a lot of blind people, and, and he surmised, he even thought maybe it was because of the reflection of the sun from the water onto the people's eyes. They were so dependent upon fishing that they, they went blind fishing from all the sun reflection. It's, you can see there's a lot of sun. There's not much other food source. I mean, this is the natural landscape right here. I don't think it would have looked much different back when the Indians were trying to survive in these conditions. This is not the landscape you want to walk up and down on. So the Columbia River is not very attractive. <clears throat> and that just gives more credibility to the hippies on the, the Pacific Coast who walk up and down. They, they, uh, they see good opportunities. The trees are beautiful. The ocean is majestic. Um, the weather is, is very stable. There's a lot of benefit to walking up and down that Pacific coast as opposed to walking up and down the Columbia River. I don't know what the Mississippi River would be like, um, but yeah, once again, the ocean is probably the best. That also makes me in turn question uh, what it'd be like to be a hippie walking up and down the East Coast Ocean. I don't think the experience would be nearly as magical as as walking up and down the northern part of California. You really see a, a difference in the hippie culture around the North California. And do you blame them? Really? Take a look around elsewhere. 
those hippies are really choosing the most ideal spot to to live on foot, to walk around, to just relax and enjoy enjoy their lives. That really is. I mean, just and I'm just coming. I'm just. I didn't really give it much thought until I just started driving down the Columbia River, and I'm like, wow, there is a very big difference. There's a, a lot of benefits to being a hippie in the, the northern part of California. So look at this. This is, this is all temperate desert. They got windmill farms. They got buttes. Buttes are a definite sign of a barren wasteland. I mean, they got it fenced off for the cows. The cows are surviving, but these are definitely not milk cows. They're beef. Because they got to spread out. They got to walk very long, wide expanses to find any kind of decent food. So I, I don't believe that these cows are eating the sagebrush. Maybe they are. The sagebrush. Some of the greenest greenest vegetation out here and I don't think it's very palatable to the cows but I'm not sure the sagebrush puts out some strong scents that's actually perf like perfume but is it is it something that the cows enjoy eating the cows will enjoy eating stinging nettle and have no problem with it they'll sting their tongues all day their tongues might be actually like this thing, like it's a, a pleasure receptor, but the scent of the sagebrush might be a completely different story. Wow, there's some tires being shredded out here. Yeah, just check this out. This is the Columbia River, and no way anybody is going to be a hippie and walk up and down the Columbia River. I don't doubt that people have thought about it people hippies and, and bums have considered it I mean I, I talked to a bum who was who was just hanging out in in uh, that one last city um, I, I forget cities so easily uh, I was back back west somewhere and and he wasn't he was he didn't look like he was really on any major journey it sounded like he's been hanging out in an RV while you got hippies camping out in between the, under the redwood trees, those beautiful tall redwood trees. Hippies jump, going into the forest and just, and just sleeping overnight in the, in the, amongst the tall trees, worshiping the trees like it's, it's a religion. No, nothing in the Bible recognizes the redwood tree. That's a, the redwood tree draws the redwood tree inspires a religion of its own. It is a majestic, majestic area. And, and, and hippies, hippies learn that. Okay, they become new people. They evolve after uh, living, after sleeping between the redwood trees. I can't say I've really slept between the redwood trees. I, I walked between them, but I never actually pitched a tent or just laid down and slept. But it's, it's definitely a magical experience just walking around. But you don't get that same experience on the coast. <clears throat> but yeah, I could I could imagine uh, Lewis and Clark were, up and, were up, up and down this Columbia River. Trader ships have been down this river. Currently, there's uh, train tracks. You could you could actually hop a train on the, that, that uh, follows this river the trains carry a lot of stuff from China they have boxes and boxes the trains run day and night the ships I've watched the ships bring those boxes in through the inlet of the Columbia River at, at uh, almost near uh, Astoria Oregon um, and the mouth is further out west, more like Warrington, Oregon. You hang out at that beach in Warrington, and you'll you'll see some Chinese ships coming in with those big boxes. Okay, they take them all the way to Portland, up, uh, download them onto trains, 
and then the trains carry those boxes further inland. Whatever, whatever Portland doesn't keep for itself and doesn't send um, west or no, or, no, or uh, south or north, they'll they'll uh, throw them on the train and, and start sending them east. So it's it's really interesting to see. I just I wonder what's what's all in those boxes. They're constantly shipping things from China. It's a very active trade. Yeah, there's the train tracks off to the off to the left. Whoops. Uh oh. Okay. Yeah, very busy train tracks. Trains that tracks that see a heavy load. In fact, they doubled up the tracks just in case. Well, that's more for trains coming, going down and coming back. They're just so busy. Sending, sending the products, the cheap Chinese knockoff products, all kinds of various, various uh, types. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I mean, I had to look. I had to take a look at the, the coast of the Columbia. I didn't know exactly what to expect. I kind of expect, I, I have to say, I kind of expected to see more vegetation, and I'm, I'm disappointed. Okay, this is, this is not, this is not very appealing. But, I mean, Hermiston, 40, Legrand, 113, Ontario, 228, where? Um, yeah, I did go through Washington and that was a barren landscape as well, so, I mean, I, I shouldn't be surprised, I'm just disappointed, the Cascade Range really, really stops all the rain, it's unfortunate. If we didn't have that Cascade Range, the Midwest would just be an agricultural powerhouse. But instead we got two extremes. Entering Moreau County, still along the Columbia River, Moreau